Today is May 7th, 2024, and we've had a lot of rainy days so far at the end of April, beginning of May, where our back part has flooded. We even had standing water of like five inches in the garden at one point. Um, so I wanted to show the garden before everything gets planted out, although there is some stuff still um, planted out in there because it has been a much warmer spring than usual. So let's go check it out. First though, here are the raspberry bushes. The deer were going after them, so I ended up putting these snow stakes around them and it's been keeping the deer away. And then these are our apple trees. This one's the Honey Crisp, and that one's the Harlan Red. You can see that the Harlan Red this year filled with flowers. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. The Honey Crisp didn't, so I don't think we'll get any apples because we don't have that cross pollination as an option. But I love how they look. I think you can see the standing water in the front, but we've got this new archway here. Um, which is really nice because you don't have to bend down to get into the garden anymore. This part will just not dry out. And you can see we've got some standing water in the front as well. Can you see all the worms? The birds must be having a field day. So I have nothing in this side of the tall bed, but over here just a few days ago, I planted radish, carrot, and just a couple of onion bulbs. I'm trying to use the onions as a deterrent for um, different kinds of bugs. This is the strawberry bed, and it's slowly coming back to life. It did have a weed problem, and I had to spend about two hours going over that, uh, getting all those weeds out, but you can see we've already got a flower. So I have bought some things to make kind of a netting enclosure for this, which I got to get done in a few days. These are all radishes and when they're done in a few weeks, I will replace them with uh, bush beans. And then I have kale and spinach here and this is empty right now. I'm using this whole bed for potatoes this year and then I will transfer it over to some fall crops since it will be an early bed. Uh, we got red Norlands on this side and then Irish cobbler on this side which they're starting to poke out but not as quick as the reds. So this part of our fence just has chicken wire on the one side and it doesn't have anything on the inside and the chicken wire has been bowing out a little bit. You can tell <laughs> from my dog that they're have been some critters and creatures um, trying to get in. So one of the big projects this spring has been lining, double lining our cattle panels here. So I started in some of the spots where we were having kind of the greatest weakness, but I wanna keep the chicken wire up here. I just need to get it better attached um, because it's very pokey. <laughs> and so animals don't like climbing it up. And then I'm putting a hardware mesh on the inside as low down as I can go. This is a super slow process because I want the hardware mesh to be super tight to the fence so that it doesn't end up bowing in the wind that we have. Um, but also it's just like super hard to roll out because it's really tight. It has been working and we haven't gotten any critters coming in here yet, but it is one of the things that makes me jealous of people who garden in places where they don't have like mammals that they have to protect from, uh, deer, raccoons, squirrels, bunnies, the, the whole like, because this is the other thing I've had to start doing. Laying the top of some of the beds where I have um, bulbs or anything that's large that's buried underneath in chicken wire because the squirrels have started digging in the beds. 
not the beds that just have seeds or seedlings or other large plants, but particularly anything with bulbs. So this part is covered because there are some um, onion bulbs. And then over here, it's not covered because this is just carrot seed. This is my blueberry bed. So I'm trying to resuscitate the two little guys that I overwintered. So that's those two. And then this is a new one I got. It's got a lot of blooms on it. It's doing okay. It's starting to turn green. And then I put some uh, strawberries in here to kind of help with weed cover, but you can see I've already got a lot of weeds I need to pull out of this. These two beds are empty at the moment. This is a whole bed of onion bulbs. Um, red on this side and yellow on the other. And I planted this at the beginning of April. I was always told that onions don't grow when we've had freezing weather and it's been down into the 20s and I've had no problems with them. I don't know how the bulbs will turn out, but they seem to be growing really well. So this part obviously is lower than the other parts. You can see because we got a a lot more standing water. Um, and in here, I planted a rhubarb, and that's a Canadian red. And then I put asparagus over here, and I've been having problems with the squirrels trying to dig up that asparagus. I also have blackberries that I tried to put in ground. There's one there and one there, and it's so wet over here, I don't think they're going to survive. This bed is empty, and this bed is empty, and that's just sitting up here because I knew we were going to get storms, and I didn't want, um, I didn't have enough room for it, and I didn't want it to get completely waterlogged in the bottom. All of my pots are empty right now, but they're ready to be filled, and this is the one spot where we don't have anything. We'll have one of those metal um, tall beds here. Uh, but right now it's just holding some cardboard and extra wood. So everything that we really need to work on now, um, eventually we'll get that other bed that I'll put in, but also uh, just getting the ground dried out, which I have no influence over. Um, reinforcing the fencing inside and outside, and then making sure I'm protecting everything from all the various creatures that also want to eat the produce and vegetables. Happy sort of spring to all my fellow northern gardeners and uh, good luck. I hope your weather warms up so you can start planning too. That's our mallard. I don't know where the hen is. She disappears easier. But he comes back whenever it floods. <laughs>